Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna do a comparison between the new Tundra Baja concept that was at the Chicago Auto Show, and then the new Ford Raptor with the 37 performance package. Now, this is actually a pilot episode for a new series that I want you guys to let me know if you'd be interested in me making more videos like this on the channel. So I'm not gonna pretend like this is completely new content. What I'm gonna be doing for this series is I'm gonna be taking videos that I've already filmed and I'm going to cut out the audio and then I'm going to voice over those videos. And the reason I'm doing this is it's been very difficult to get a hold of vehicles with the current market. And that means that comparisons have been extremely difficult. And so I've been thinking about this for like the last couple of months and I'm like, what is a way that I would be able to make it so that I could do comparisons with all these availability issues? And I thought, why not use footage that I've already filmed on these vehicles, combine the footage together, voice over, do the comparison, and so then you guys can kind of get that comparison content with the availability issues. Let me know if you guys like this content. If you guys don't like this, I completely understand and I'll scrap it, uh, but let's just try it out and let's get right into the video. Start things off with the Raptor. So first off, Popping into the hood, we have a twin turbo 3.5 liter V6, goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. It's good for 450 horsepower and then 510 pound feet of torque. Fuel economy is 15 around town and then 16 on the highway. And uh, significantly less than what you have with the uh, Tundra TRD Pro because that one has the hybrid powertrain that has quite a bit more pep in its step to say the least. Now going over the front ends of the Raptor, you guys can see just how aggressive uh, the front end looks. You can see the decals there on the hood. Definitely a cool little touch. And uh, going from that, you can see you've got the venting down the center with the Raptor logo. All the marker lights here in the center. And then you can see you've got the chunky Ford grille right? And notice you've got the LED accent light around the lights that also uh, is orange to match everything else. And going on from that, you can see the fog light area. So we actually do have fog lights there, rigid lights. Uh, funny enough, all the TRD Pros uh, seem to have rigid lights as well. So maybe uh, Ford kind of stole from Toyota a little bit with that. Parking sensors there on the front bumper. And then you guys can see uh, with the tow hooks there on the front end as well. And then got the massive exposed skid plate here on the front end. It just has like a really cool, aggressive uh, appearance. And uh, then you can see the full front view, just a really good looking uh, truck. Now going on for that to the side, this one has the 37 package. So you've got 17 inch wheels and you've got 37s wrapped around those. Beadlock capable wheels, they look fantastic. And then the other thing about the Raptor is you've got the live valve uh, shocks from Fox. You can see the suspension there. I can't really see the shocks too much, uh, but uh, I'll show you guys the rear and you'll be able to see it a lot uh, better. And uh, then going from that, you've got the off-road side steps. And then notice we've got the mirror, which I'm a huge fan of, like just the look of the mirrors. And then also has a camera on it and then the venting there on the side, which is another cool touch. And then you guys can see with the uh, door handles right there. They're body colored, got another Raptor logo, and then this one's got the decal there on the side, uh, the 37, because again, it's a 37 package. Uh, pretty cool little thing, protects the bed, and yeah, just, I, I don't know, I think it looks good aesthetically. Now you can see the rear tire setup here, and again, you've got the live valve from Fox, the new 5-link coil. The Tundra also has 5-link coil suspension, so they're kind of matching from a suspension standpoint, but the shocks on the Raptor are a lot more advanced because uh, the live valve is an active system that changes with the drive mode, and there's also a suspension button on the steering wheel you can change as well, so there's definitely that uh, distinction. Distinction, can't talk today apparently. Notice we've got the Raptor key fob right here with a bunch of functions like drop-down tailgate, and then you've got the remote start as well. Now, the bed area in the Raptor is actually uh, pretty decently sized. It's a five and a half foot bed, roughly. And it's the only bed length you can get with the Raptor. You can't get a longer bed than that. Payload capacity is like 1,300 pounds with the truck. Uh, the Raptor has a little bit more payload than the uh, Tundra TRD Pro, if you guys are wondering. The Tundra is like, it varies package to package, but it's usually around like 1,200 pounds, roughly, for most of the new Tundra packages. Now it's got the LED lights and then We've got the outlets here on the bed and then also the cargo tie downs. So quite a bit going on from a bed perspective. And uh, the other nice little feature is you've got the automatic raise function with the tailgate. So it'll just pop right up for you. So and just a bunch of cool tech with the new Raptor. And then the other thing to mention here with the rear end, you guys can see the taillights and the marker lights there on the back again. Makes the truck look a little bit more aggressive from an aesthetic 
perspective. And uh, you guys can see there with the uh, fenders in the rear, those uh, are wide, but the Tundra's got much wider fenders with the uh, Baja version. See full uh, blacked out portion of the light and then full LED lights there for the rear. And again, you've got the giant four logo stamped there onto the bed. Some people like it, some people don't. And then you see the bumper down below with the parking sensors there. And we have the new trombone exhaust, which sounds really good. Uh, the Tundra, they didn't do anything crazy with the exhaust, uh, so it doesn't sound uh, loud. The Raptor is definitely going to be more uh, loud and obnoxious from an exhaust uh, perspective. Got the recovery hooks there on the back end. And then you guys can see again with the five link coil there in the rear. And so you can kind of see with the exhaust a little bit, kind of how that loops around. And then it's funny how they actually fit a 37 underneath for the spare tire, which is uh, pretty crazy stuff. But moving on from that to the passenger area, you guys can see with the 37 package for 21, you only had one interior option, which was the uh, blue. So you've got the blue with the code orange with the accenting and I'm a fan of it. I think it looks great. Some people don't, uh, but for 2022, you can get a black interior if you don't like the look of this interior. And so I, I think, you know, it's not necessarily the nicest feeling with the material use, but I think it looks nice also with uh, what Ford's done on the door panel. And then again, you've got the blue Recaro seat, or not Recaro seats, sorry, just the blue seats. Thinking about the uh, 2020 Raptor, not the 21 that this is. And then popping here to the front, you guys can see with the door panel again same thing you got blind spot monitoring for the mirrors all of our you know regular window controls and that whole setup three functions for the memory seats more carbon fiber trim right next to that bang olsen sound system which is not a perfect sound system but it's, it's actually pretty good got the speaker on the headrest which is another nice little feature you got the raptor logo there and then you guys can see the perforations there in the alcantara all down the center and uh, notice with the uh, side of the seat you also have the power adjustments down below and uh, the bolstering on these seats is very aggressive. It's more aggressive than what you get with the uh, black seats, if you guys are wondering, uh, with the with the black interior with the Raptor. Pedal layout as well, you know, normal stuff. And got a bunch of controls, pedal adjustment, light controls, mirror lights, all that stuff. So the Raptor has a bunch of like little uh, tech options. The steering wheel is power adjustable. And then notice you got the flag that's finished in code orange too. And then the giant paddle shifters there on the back of the steering wheel. And then actually uh, popping here into the Raptor, you can see a full digital gauge cluster. Next thing to go over quickly is the steering wheel. So you guys can see here with the steering wheel, you've got the orange marker there at the top, and then we've got the orange stitching in the center. And then you can see uh, all of our practical car controls, and then also you got the steering adjustment, suspension adjustment, exhaust adjustment as well. And then you can see the paddle shifters again there on the back. And then notice here, we've got like our adaptive cruise control and volume control and all that fun stuff on the other side. And then here's the full digital gauge cluster. So looks really good from an aesthetic perspective, if you ask me. You can see the different steering modes. So normal, uh, comfort, sport, and then off-road. And then normal, sport, and off-road for the suspension settings. And then there's normal, sport, Baja, and quiet for the different exhaust settings. And really with the Raptor, it only sounds different between like quiet and normal. There's a little bit of a difference in sport and Baja, but it's not a huge difference. And then you can see all the different drive modes here with the Raptor and the animations that they've done in the center. Um, the new Tundra has a full digital gauge cluster as well, but it doesn't have like crazy animations like this. It basically just pops up with a drive mode. It does change the gauge cluster a little bit, but it's not as significant. And then you can see all the controls up here, most important off-road cruise control. And then you've got like the camera button there, the uh, blinking light everyone always asks about, because you can't see that in person. You can only see it on camera, funny enough. But that's everything there at the top. Got the 12 inch display and then the camera system on the Raptor, I will say is uh, amazing. And the resolution just seems a little bit better than Toyota's, but they're both really close from a camera perspective. Uh, so Toyota's definitely stepped up their game. They've got like a full 360 camera system. So either way you won't be disappointed. And then um, you guys can see all the different viewpoints. And a quick note, the rest of the infotainment system with the Ford, I feel like it's nicely integrated into the dash, uh, unlike the Tundra's 12 inch display and really easy to use. They're both easy to use, but this just looks a little bit more nicely integrated. And then notice we got our drive line select and drive mode select, climate controls, you got the dual zone climate system. Uh, the Raptor does have four wheel auto, if you guys are wondering. And then you can see here with the wireless phone charging area and then notice the carbon fiber that covers that whole section, definitely a, Cool look, 
cup holders, and then you guys can see the shifter that can fold down. We've got the workbench center console, which is another option that Ford's added. Notice you've got the Raptor logo there. Again, there's Raptor logos everywhere on the truck. Got to let everyone know what you're uh, driving. It's not a regular... Ain't no regular F-150, if you guys know the song lyric. Um, but you can see there with the glove box, practical from a storage space perspective. It's got the dual glove box set up. More carbon fiber there, and then um, dash materials and feel the nicest, but I think it looks nice. And then you can see up top here, we've got the sunglass holder and then six auxiliary switches, so you can add a bunch of different auxiliary items. The first one's tied into those front fog lights, if you guys are wondering. And then full panoramic sunroof. And then a power sliding window as well. And there's the Raptor portion of the video. Let's go over the Tundra Baja for the comparison. Uh, so you guys can see here from a hood perspective, you've got some accenting on the hood. It doesn't have like the same venting there in the center, but I still think it looks really good. And that's uh, standard with the Tundra TRD Pro. You guys will see a TRD Pro at the end of this video. And then you've got the new Tundra headlights here. And uh, from a headlight perspective, I think they're both cool. Uh, the Tundra doesn't have like the same like aesthetic that the Raptor has with the headlights, but I think they look great. I love that you've got the marker lights in the center and then the old school Toyota logo and then a light bar in the grill. The Raptor doesn't have anything like that. Still have a front camera. Uh, and then you guys can see the lights down below. Again, doesn't have anything like that. And then uh, the bumper on this truck definitely helps out with ground clearance. It's got a skid plate uh, attached to it and uh, you guys can see, you can see the shocks in suspension very well. Uh, so it has just a really aggressive off-roader type appearance. And then you've got the TRD skid plate there underneath. And yeah, just a really cool look. And uh, you can see here with the tires, 37s. Uh, so just as big as what the Raptor has. And definitely cool off-roader type aesthetic for like the tire and wheel setup. You've got the Method wheels on this truck. And then you can see just how aggressive those tires are they're kind of more like mud terrain tires and then you do have fox shocks with this just like the raptor but the biggest difference is uh these shocks are not uh automatically adjustable like the raptor so you guys can see carbon fiber fender flare uh, i'll kind of talk about the shocks for a second while we're showing some other elements so with the raptor again it's an active system so you can just press the button on the steering wheel or you can change your drive mode and it'll change how the shocks are like firm them up or it'll kind of loosen things up if you're doing like off-road driving and all that whereas with these shocks they're adjustable but like you have to go in and adjust them yourself so like if you wanted to do some off-roading and you wanted it to be a little bit softer right you have to go in and you have to like crank it basically uh, same thing if you want to have it firmer so it's just it's a great system um, there's definitely some benefits to having a system that's not uh, active right that's something that will potentially be more reliable and because uh, there's less going on and on top of that, a lot of these active systems, they have everything like really covered up. And so uh, they can actually heat up pretty quick, especially when you're off road. And so you'll have uh, heat issues with them because of how like enclosed everything is. Uh, Ram T-Rex is the same thing. So the non-active system can actually uh, have some benefits. And then also this actually is like a real like wide, wide body. The new Raptor doesn't, they've made it more narrow. Whereas with this concept, super wide, you guys can see again, 37s there in the bed. Uh, instead, of, instead of having the tire under the truck, right? You've got it in the bed, which is a lot more practical from an off-roader perspective because you're not gonna get them all dirty and everything uh, like you would with the Raptor tire being underneath. And then you got the marker lights here in the center. The one thing that's weird about this concept is there's no marker lights on the fender flares in the front or the rear. It doesn't have five. It just has three marker lights. So this technically is not street legal with its uh, current setup, which is uh, kind of interesting. But I think the aesthetic on it is just phenomenal. Um, Toyota nailed it. And being a Raptor owner, I will say that I think that, you know, this truck needs a little bit more uh, negative offset than what it has right now. You guys can kind of see that where the fender and fender flare kind of poke out outside of the tires but besides that if you just made the tires poke out a little bit more right maybe some spacers or something i think it's a better looking truck than the raptor uh, in a lot of ways personally from an exterior aesthetics perspective and you guys can see just how tall uh, it is it's absolutely massive and um, with everything they've done with it it actually sits higher than a raptor as well and then you've got the cool like red interior. And like I said, with Toyota, you've got a digital gauge cluster, 12 inch infotainment system. The infotainment system is just not as nicely integrated there onto the dash. It just looks like it's kind of plopped on. 
and uh, still have a panoramic center for all that fun uh, luxury stuff. So like a lot of the luxury and creature comforts are the same between the trucks. It's just kind of uh, like the off-road tech is the biggest difference. Now this is a stock uh, Tier 2 Pro. I decided to keep this in this uh, comparison video so you guys can see what you can actually buy. And I also wanted to kind of talk about this. Uh, so this is the truck that you'll actually be able to purchase. That Baja Twitter doesn't officially have that uh, out. Now, with the regular uh, TRD Pro, it doesn't technically compete directly with the Raptor, but there's a lot of people that are comparing this to the Raptor because a lot of people buy these trucks and never take them uh, off-road. And so I wanted to kind of talk about uh, the benefits of the TRD Pro and then, you know, compared to the Raptor. So uh, quickly... With the TRD Pro, it's a little bit less expensive than the Raptor, fully loaded. The Raptor starts at like $65,000, whereas a TRD Pro um, is going to come pretty fully loaded already because the Toyota makes most everything standard equipment. And so a fully loaded TRD Pro is probably going to be around $70-ish thousand dollars roughly whereas a fully loaded raptor is over eighty thousand dollars so there's a there is a price benefit with the TRD pro uh, and then from an on-road driving perspective uh, the truck's actually going to feel super uh, fun because again it's got the hybrid system as standard and uh, that hybrid system is amazing it's 437 horsepower and almost 600 pound feet of torque and so that's substantially more than the raptor and so the truck's going to get a little bit better fuel economy most likely um, and then on top of getting a little bit better fuel economy, most likely, we'll see uh, real on-road driving, it's uh, also just going to feel much more powerful, especially offline, because you get the instant power and torque from the hybrid system. So that's another benefit to the TRD Pro. And then with the shocks, if you do have to replace them, uh, being a more simple system, right, they're going to be a little bit less expensive than the live valve you have with the Raptor. The live valve are like literally thousands and thousands of dollars. These are still expensive shocks on the TRD Pro, but they're not nearly as expensive. And then obviously you got Toyota's reliability, right? We know that Toyota makes durable, reliable vehicles. And so with the Tundra TRD Pro, you could, you know, have confidence in the fact that it's going to last for a long time. So that's another uh, big draw and big benefit uh, to the truck. Uh, some downsides with it, um, doesn't have tow hooks, which is weird. And the tires aren't super aggressive on the truck. Uh, so they're like, you'd have to, sw if you got it and you wanted to really take it off road, you'd want to switch the tires out. Um, and then on top of that with the transmission tuning, it's not as aggressive. And so the truck, even though it's going to be faster, it's not going to feel as like snappy, uh, as the Raptor. So you are going to kind of have that key, uh, difference uh, with the Tundra compared to the Raptor. Uh, but you know, both really cool trucks overall, I would say.